In this video, I show you a cool way to play progressions on guitar using open string drone chords and banjo rolls. You learn how to take a typical chord progression and totally transform it with this very cool approach. Hi, this is Simon Candy from Acoustic Guitar Lessons Online.net, and what you're about to see is an excerpt from a live masterclass I taught in Chicago. And in this class, I show you a number of open string drone chords and how to apply them to a standard chord progression. I then take you through some forward and backward banjo rolls in isolation first before taking these to the progression, creating all kinds of very cool and unpredictable sounds. Drone chords and banjo roll patterns will become a great addition to your finger picking guitar skills. But before we get to the class, let me just briefly explain the basic concept that we'll be looking at here. Okay, so what are, what are drone chords? They're basically chords that are played on the guitar that have open strings droning throughout them. Not really talking about open chords though. We, we all know our standard open chords, and yes, we've got open strings droning with those chords, of course, but we can also play chord shapes further up the fretboard but maintain open strings, and that's essentially what I call a drone chord or an open string drone chord, if you like. So for example, I can play a little beautiful sounding A minor add nine chord here. I'm playing the open fifth string. I've got my seventh fretted A note, my fifth fretted C note on the third string, and then the open B, which is the add nine, and the E. It's a really nice open sounding drone chord there. Okay, so there's an example of a drone chord. Um, there's some other nice A minor type drone chords. This is just a straight little A minor triad, which can sound really nice. You can take open chords and move them up the fretboard. They don't always work in all positions, but in a... That's a C chord just moving up and we get that nice big open drone sound. That's essentially what an open drone chord is. Okay, and there's going to be quite a few different types I'm going to show you in this masterclass. The other concept that we're going to do and we apply to the chords is banjo rolls. So I'm going to take you through some banjo roll patterns here that we can run up and down the chords. Okay, so if we take this first chord I showed you just before, the A minor add 9, I can do a little banjo roll up and down that chord. I'm essentially doing a forward roll moving up with my first index and middle. Sometimes I use my first middle and uh, ring finger either one, but you get this nice forward banjo roll and you can bring it back down the chord. Okay, that's the basic concept, right? We're going to be looking at the forward and backward banjo rolls. So you'll see them in the, in the class here, the excerpt of the class coming up. And drone chords applied to a typical chord progression to get some really cool sounding music on your acoustic guitar. So let's go to the class. Now, I'm going to use capo here. And I know, I don't even have to ask, we all know what a capo is, and we all know that it's not cheating. It's, um, <laughs> like some people tend to think. Capo is great because it gives you different chord shapes to play the same chord progression, which lead to different embellishment opportunities and all sorts of things. The way I kind of think about capo, if I'm teaching capo, I'm probably going to need to my iPad here, is we're going to get the same key, but we're capoing at the second fret. I call it a perceived key. Your ears hear in D major, but your eyes are seeing C major. Okay, so I refer to C major as the perceived key. It's what you're perceiving there while you're looking at it, but your ears are hearing um, D major still. Okay, just with some different chords. Really, really cool, and a great way to work with songs that might be in flat keys and you want to get really cool throwing sounds, just capo it um, at a position that's going to give you a perceived key that has a lot of open chord shapes in it. That gives us a perceived key of G major, starting on a 4 chord, going to a 3 that's been made into a dominant, then we've got the 6 and 5 and 2 made into a dominant, that becomes A minor, D and G. What's this? Anyone know the name of the last four bar progression in a self-isolated? It's probably the most common jazz progression you'll come across. Two, five, one. Yep. Okay, so we've got a new perceived key, still hearing D major. And even before I do anything, 
It just sounds different. Right? Because I've got different shapes giving me the same chords. So that alone is already going to give it a variety in sound, particularly if you had someone else that wasn't capable of playing the actual key of D. Okay. Nice, nice uh, interaction between guitar parts doing that. All right, this approach here is, I just call it droning chords, basically. So you're taking fragments of chords and droning open strings around them. It's a C shape coming into my A7. So I just play part of a C bar chord, basically, there, into a B, E minor, D, the C shape, and A7. Another approach here too that I'll bring in is just moving over the static chord with these shapes. So just because A7 is not moving for a bar doesn't mean you can't move between chord voices. So I could be playing an A7, another A, right, little triad A up there. The open strings ringing through, bringing different the relationships with the fretted notes. They might be chord tones, they might be extensions, but they all sound good for the most part if you're in the you know, keys that are compatible to this type of thing. I could use an open chord, nothing wrong with the, the open chord. I could use fragments of B, B7, little bits of E minor to D. That's an A with a C sharp in the bass, so just an, in, uh, an inverted chord to A minor. So I'll just drop that C down. Another little A minor shape, so more movement over the, the static chord there. And again, here too with our D. And we could drone that higher string. And G. Okay. So there's lots of things you can do there, heaps of stuff. If we bring it back to finger picking, so you could do all that with flat picking and strumming, so it's not necessarily just finger picking. I like banjo rolls a lot. Um, because they can sound really cool and very applicable to guitar, of course. So I'm going to put up a couple of um, banjo roll patterns. Okay, it might be better if I put them up first and then I'll explain, explain them. Okay, so the first one is going to be working as a forward banjo roll, groups of three strings at a time, moving from six, five, four, five, four, three, Four, three, two, three, two, one. So the repeating cycle is three, but it's against two. It's a quaver rhythm, but it's a repeating pattern of, of three notes moving up the strength. And for the most part, you, do, well, you would use your thumb, index, and middle for each group of three there. Coming down, you could do the same thing. Here's a pattern. If I think back far enough, I think I learned this. Uh, through Chet Atkins piece or something like that, a descending pattern which sounds really cool and again it's in groups of three but it's a little bit different the way it sets up. You're playing between two adjacent strings so again in three. Now with this one it's really really important that you use your thumb for the first note, middle for the top string and when you return to the note that your thumb played previously it's your index finger. That way your thumb will be nice and ready set up to go to here. It's a lot of work for the thumb to pluck that and to get there smoothly. So that's why we want to um, use a different finger there. Okay? You get, and you'll get different tones. It's like you got uh, four picks there, thumb and the three fingers, particularly when you've got the nails. One's ascending, one's descending. I'll play you through the ascending one. Um, we've got... Right, so we don't want to get this one and done, two and done, three and done, four and done. You could do that. But for this, I prefer to most times one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. One and two and three and one and two and three, four. Coming down, thumb, middle, index. Thumb, middle, index. This is the top two strings. Then the next two strings, there's an overlap there. Then the fourth string, fifth string and the bottom string. So again, it's a, it's a two fill. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. One and two and four and one and two and three, four. Okay, so if you had a chord like a C chord, you could 
run up with the, the ascending pattern. And you could come down with the, with the descending pattern, okay? So there, you can get a lot of mileage out of those. If we just come back to our core progression here, what I want to try and do here today too, is carry over um, elements from previous examples. Because we know it's, it's not about one thing, then another, then another. It's like one big pot, and you're putting in things as you go. So you mix stuff together, and grab this, and that, and that, and make something, right? We don't want to see everything isolated. Yes, you want to learn it in isolation first, definitely. But then that's, that's just step one. You want to mix <coughs> things together and think, how can I bring in some jazz or you know, chords or some walking bass or whatever. I'm going to play through that chord progression again. The approach being the, the droning chords. Right? I was running through before. And I'm going to feature that pattern. It's not going to just be up and down because it's not going to really sound that great. But I'm going to kind of, yeah, see if I can feature those, those patterns a little bit. Okay? So... So that's an example of just bringing in banjo roll type stuff um, to our droning chord progression. Okay? Does that sound alright? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad. If you like the finger picking ideas and concepts we explored in this video, then check out the Ultimate Finger Picking Guitar Course, a complete system for finger picking acoustic guitar so simple even a beginner can learn it. I've carefully designed this course to do all the heavy lifting for you as far as knowing exactly what to do, how to do it and when to do it in regard to mastering the art of finger picking guitar. All you have to do is follow the pathway I've laid out for you. In the Ultimate Finger Picking Guitar course, you will learn and master all the key concepts, methods, strategies and techniques needed for finger picking, including the exact order in which to do things, avoiding the all too common mistakes most people make when learning to finger pick guitar. This will save you time and frustration. So click the link in the description below this video and check out the Ultimate finger picking guitar course. Let me know in the comments section what guitar topics you would like to see covered in future videos. I read every comment and I would love to hear your suggestions. If you like this video then hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that all important notification bell button so YouTube can tell you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. Thank you as always for watching this video. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.